Hey, Dustin here, Smoking Eagles Rod Shop, and today I've got the van back in the shop. Why, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you. In three weeks, there is a NASCAR race about 100 miles from here, which doesn't sound like very far, but my grandpa's old van hasn't been plated since 03, and I haven't driven it further than the gas station since I brought it home. Now, it does have all new brakes, and I did some maintenance crap on the engine, but it still has a long way to go to be dependable, even to my Walmart, <laughs> to be honest with you. But if you watched my last van video, you would know that the last thing I did was rip all the floors out of the front of the van because they are just trashed. So my goal for this video is to get floor pans in the front here and make two patch panels here so I can bolt the seats and stuff back in it. And I can start driving this thing around and let it leave me stranded on the side of the road, places that are closer to my house than 100 miles away. I also need to patch over here, make a bracket or something for that side door, but these are the most pertinent and important things right at the moment. But yeah, let's, uh, let's get fabricating this thing up and see where the van takes us. <laughs> so the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out what all I need to cut out of here in order to put my patch panel in. I'm gonna do this side and I'm gonna do the other side and then I'll know how far back they're gonna come once I get those in there. And like I said, I'm just gonna sheet metal screw them in and then later on after, I don't know what that goes to. I think that went to the seat or something for a seat belt. I'll just unplug it up there, we don't need it. So this, I believe, is the passenger side. This, I believe, is the driver's side. It looks like they gave me a ton of metal. Uh-oh. I think that means the cops are coming for me. Oh, lights went out. So I'll put a new battery in that light, and I'm gonna take this inner kick panel off so we can see how bad it's really rusted up in there but man it looks like that panel is gonna go way up in there so I ought to be able to cut a bunch of that out because I can see daylight through the firewall which isn't good but could be worse it looks like this lip turns here so ah, we can hide all that we can hide it so I got that sidekick panel off of there came right off only had three screws I got this small little container here that I'm gonna keep uh, all my stuff that I'm going to keep and reinstall. I'm guessing there isn't going to be a whole lot, so I picked this little tiny container. Now, I'm not a Ford guy. This is a 76 Ford Econoline van, and it had this box right here with these big old wires going in the bottom. I'm going to call it the uh, brain box. There was this note on the back side of here from my grandpa from a 100 years ago, and you can barely read it. It almost looks like a piece of medical tape, like you would splint your fingers together with. And it says, okay. It looks like uh, above or something. It might be a date. It's my grandpa. I mean, look right here, these tags. It tells me everything he did. 9-17-94. 6-10-94. Yeah, 9-17-94. The mileage was 89,145 miles. He put approximately three quarts of 10W40. 61096. The mileage was 90,661. He added one quart of 1040. <laughs> I mean, this stuff is just so cool. Look, right here. 62691. Mileage. 85,620 miles. Changed oil and filter. Four quarts Phillips 10W40. One quart of Marvel Mystery Oil. Greased front suspension. Greased universal joints. Added half quart to the rear differential. <laughs> Just, yeah, it's awesome, guys. Anyway, things like that are what motivate me to save things and kind of keep them around, I guess, because, you know. So, anyway, this box is supposed to be mounted up in there, which is where it was, but it was so rusty, there's no way I was going to get this bracket off, so I just bent her back and forth and broke her off. We'll mount it back up under here somewhere. Now, I've got all these wires. I unplugged the um, dimmer switch, 
And I'm just gonna zip tie all these wires up out of the way and I'm gonna get a new dimmer switch because as you can see, this one is completely trashed. The new, um, the new floor pan doesn't have a mount for it, but we can just make one or we can mount it wherever my foot feels comfy up in here somewhere. Honestly, you could mount it. You could mount it anywhere. I think the only reason they put this standoff on here is just so the bolts for it don't go right down into the fender well, because right there's the tire, but I don't think that's going to matter. I'll just use a couple rivets or something. But yeah, so there's that. Obviously, the switch is junk, but those are a couple bucks. I probably got one. And then this little plastic piece that keeps it from coming unplugged. Seems good. We'll reuse that. So I'll throw it in the reuse pile. This junk pile. So I'll get a zip tie. I'll zip tie this up out of the way. Get some more of this garbage out of here so we can really see what we're working with. And we'll take a permanent marker and we'll start making life changing decisions. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so I've cut our dimmer switch bracket out of there and I'm looking at our new panel here and it's got this nice little notch here and I'm assuming that that is supposed to be this notch right here. I don't know if it's supposed to be underneath this lip or on top of it, doesn't really matter at this point. We're gonna put carpet over all that and trim and everything else at some point anyway. So, kind of slide this up in here. Right like so. And it actually fits pretty good. Um, it looks like with just a little bit of finessing, I could get this thing to basically sit right on top of the old rotted out floor and completely replace it. Now. I don't want to leave all that crusty metal up underneath there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out as much of it as I possibly can. Essentially, I need to cut right down along this edge and I need to cut right down along here and I'll cut around this little edge and I'll cut around here and then I'll cut straight across to here. I'll get all this crusty stuff out of here and then up in here, I think I'm going to cut right down along this edge if I can. I'm gonna try and cut right down along back just a little bit. Oh, sorry, pedal's in the way. I'm gonna cut down off of here just a little bit. One, because it's gonna be easier to get my cutoff wheel in there. And two, that'll give the new panel something to kind of sit on. And then we'll be able to run a couple self tappers down in there to kind of hold everything in place. And yeah, I'm hoping I can finesse the lip on the front of this and get it to kind of fix all these holes up in here. Yeah. Now to do this the right, right way, if you're doing like a full frame off restoration, I guess if I wanted to go to the next level, I could pull the steering column and cut all that out, cut all this crap out and patch it all in, but we're not doing any of that. That's all going to get, I don't know, spray bombed black. Then it'll be like it never happened. And then we'll put some new seam sealer in here and that'll just keep dirt and garbage from getting back in here. So I'll get this all cleaned up and we'll start cutting. So what I've done here is I've cut away this whole side here down into this corner and I've lifted the van up and I took this front wheel off and as you can see there's a body support right here that runs right next to the frame and that's where the body mount is. I know it looks a little crusty but it's plenty good. It's not rusted through there or anything so the body's sitting on that just fine. I don't want to cut through this brace. Sorry about that light over there. She's a little aggressive. Um, what I want to be able to do is I'm going to use my body saw and I'm going to cut right over to the edge of this and then I'm going to cut right down this seam so that that body support will stay and I can also see the firewall right here and I'm going to try and stay right out in front of it and cut right over here. That'll give that panel a lip to sit on up on the inside. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it on the other side there, but we'll cross that path when we get there. 
Got that all chopped out of there. As you can see, we got a big old gaping hole now. And I cut right down along that body line. Worked perfectly. Chopped this out, even cleaned that up a little bit. Now, I could have used a sawzall or a cutoff wheel or something, but man, these little body saws, they work really good. They get they're, they got fine teeth and they cut fast enough you get done, but slow enough you have control of what you're doing. You kind of got to be careful though if you hit thin metal, sometimes they take off on you. But um, yeah, so I'm kind of just eyeballing this and coming up with my next plan. I don't want to cut into the far side of this, but this all looks like pretty good metal over there if you look from a... Oh, <laughs> my little lanyard got stuck on the old wheel stud. Anyway, if you look up in here, this metal up in here is actually all in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna start cutting from that side over there and kind of come this way until I get kind of close. And then I'll get that metal out of the way and see where we need to go from there. I'm pretty sure I can, yeah, you can feel the edge is right there. I don't know if you can see my finger poking through the hole there. That's the edge of this. So maybe I can mark here and I can mark up here and I can just draw me a line with a permanent marker and then I'll cut down that and then I'll just trim it back because then I'll be able to see up in there. I think that's kind of my game plan. Let's get it on. If there's one thing I've learned over the years, it's test fit, test fit, test fit. Cut a little, test fit. Cut a little, test fit. So this bends in just a little bit towards the firewall so that's all gonna need to bend up flat because we're gonna save all that. Um, and use it to cover all that garbage there. This corner over here is hitting a little bit, so I'm gonna take this floor pan patch over to the bench and kind of finesse that with the vise and see if I can't get that to bend back and give us a little more clearance. Once we get it into place, we can use a ball peen hammer and a chisel or whatever we need to do, piece of metal, and we can kind of finesse that baby into place. We don't wanna cut more material than we have um, material to patch, but looking really good, feeling really good about this. I cut this up this way a little bit um, with my cutoff wheel, just kind of tracking up that way. Like I said, I know that this bend here is really on the safe side of our brace here. Our brace stops like right over in here. So as long as I cut this up kind of this way, then I can cut across and that should help us out. I'm gonna see if I can get this plug out of here next and then determine where I'm gonna cut this off once I get this to fit a little bit better. So let's go um, kind of get that taken care of. Got that all chopped out. This is all pretty good metal. Now, I'm about that far away from the brace on that side, but this is all solid, so I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm gonna leave it in there, give it as much structural support as it can get. Let's slide this up here and see what we got. Right up in this corner is a little hokey. It's like we're getting real close, guys. Now this steering column is hitting and that's what's holding us from going in a little further and this needs bent back this way just a smidge more. So I'm gonna go over to the bench and uh, finesse that back a little bit. That's actually lining up pretty close. I think uh, that gap will start closing up as we start bringing this back and creating space for that. That looks like the steering column goes right down to that bottom edge. So we're going to have to trim. Unfortunately, most of this is going to have to get trimmed out of here or bent back far enough to make up for it. I guess I could try and grind that down a little bit and make that flat. That would give it a little flatter space, but I'm going to shove it back up in there and mark it with a permanent marker and then uh, 
give her a little finesse and I'll meet you guys back here um, once I'm a little more happy with it. But man, it is really close. So I got it finessed a little bit and I kind of like the way this has turned out. I did have to notch this out of here and I cleaned a little bit of seam sealer out of there and this actually tucks right up underneath that edge and there is a little bit of metal under here to help support that so that's good. I'm gonna, this is pretty crusty here but we're not gonna, we're gonna pretend like we didn't see that. We're gonna bend this over and sheet metal screw that right to it. Actually, I'm not gonna bend it. I'm gonna let the sheet metal screws pull her up tight. One thing I don't like quite yet is this here. There's a pretty good gap underneath there, but they didn't bend this crease over as sharp as it should be. So I'm gonna try and make that look a little bit better before I screw this thing in, but we can, uh, you know, finesse that with a ball peen hammer and a couple of pieces of metal to make that really fit the way it should there. But as far as up in here, everything looks really good. I need to attach it to the side of this kick panel. That's really important because this is actually our inner fender well as well. I'll go up underneath there and anything that looks super sketchy, I'll either put some seam sealer on it or I don't know, cover the license plate. Haven't got that far yet. We need to trim this out just ever so slightly. And then I need to mark and figure out where I can actually, you know, there's meat under here that I can attach this with. Then eventually I'll come back and I will weld, you know, I'll weld this pan in. Um, but for now, we just need to get her screwed in so we can move on to the next patch panel, which is gonna be this one back here and this radius here. So I'm gonna have to get the hood for this and attach it in there and make sure that we get a lip up underneath the edge of the hood that protects us from the engine. But yeah, moving right along. Only been out here for a couple of hours and making some pretty good progress. It actually has a floor now. I'm gonna grab some sheet metal screws and a couple of hammers and uh, we'll keep banging on stuff. All right, so I got the panel finessed a little bit. I got this to fit really good over here with my body hammer set. Um, everything seems to line up really good. I hit everything with a wire brush on the end of my die grinder there so we can see how crusty and nasty it really is. I will address that rust at a later date with a shaker can of something we'll pretend like it's rust proof, whatever. I'll just use Rust-Oleum because it has rust in the name and then it'll either get worse or it won't. It doesn't really matter. Anything over top of this is better than nothing. And then um, I got some other tricks up my sleeve for little holes and so forth. I grabbed a handful of self tappers and yeah, I'm using the button heads because they love to strip out. Um, I really just used them because I have a whole pile of them and they'll feel a little bit better underneath the carpet. No big deal though, you use whatever you want. The other, the real issue I have here is this Kick panel will fit. I checked it, made sure all the holes will line up with this lip right here. And then we need to work on this patch panel back here that has the actual bolt holes in it for the captain's chair, driver's seat, whatever you want to call it. We need to figure out that. So I'll get a hood and we'll set a hood on there. I actually have three hoods, which is cool because I got a pretty cool plan <clears throat> for the hood. But, um, yeah, I need to get it on there, make sure all these body lines and stuff kind of line up. One thing that I did notice, yeah. Uh, one thing I did notice here, this bolt here is for this front body mount, and there's a dimple right here in this floor pan. I assume, <laughs> I assume that there's supposed to be the bolt drop down through here and go down through this sleeve here, down through this frame, down through that body mount, and then the nut and the bolt is on the bottom side. But because this is all rotted out, the top of that bolt has rusted off. So this leaves me with the decision to A, ignore that and act like I didn't see it. Clearly it's not coming out of there, right? It's rusted tight. And you know I'm gonna fight that for two hours trying to get that bolt out. Or, I can take my air hammer and a drift pin. I can put it right on top of here because this is the top of the bolt. I can clean this up with a wire wheel a little bit. I can put it right on top of this bolt and try and drive that bolt straight down out of there and then just put a new bolt in it, drill a new hole in the top of here. 
If not, I don't know what else to do. The only other option I have would be to just drill a small hole in the top of this and put a plug in it. That way there is access there at some point. But I know where the dimple is. It's a hard decision to make. I got a handful of screws in it. It's looking really good. Now, like, you know, when you're working on your house, my very first screw didn't hit shit. Even after I looked like seven times to make sure, um, I wouldn't mess, I missed. No big deal. Anyway, uh, one thing I've learned over the years, um, air hammers are not just for destruction, they're also for um, construction. Um, get your panel in real nice and then go at it slow and kind of bend all that down so I don't have to swing in here with a hammer miss a hundred times and break stuff um, get it finessed in there pretty close um, yeah everything's looking really good now check this out guys right here is a little high when I push down see it bulging up right there that's that damn body bolt so I need to pull all these screws out and I need to take the top of that body bolt and I just need to grind it down so that it's not hitting my panel then I'll put all these screws back in and I'm gonna leave this panel just like it is and I'm gonna start working on my next panel. Now, I'm gonna end up putting um, a half dozen more screws in this to hold it all down. Um, I'll put screws down in here and there's some meat over in here. I can put screws in here, but I'm gonna overlap my next panel or I'm gonna tuck it underneath. Haven't decided yet till we make the panel. And then I'll screw those two panels together and I'll just keep working my way back. This should be a whole nother separate panel. And I'm only gonna cut out the super jagged stuff, guys. I'm not gonna cut everything out of here because as rusty as it looks, it is kind of helping hold some shit together and it'll give me a lot to really attach the new panel to. Like I said, I'm gonna um, spray bomb the top of it with some Rust-Oleum or something and then put that panel down. I'm gonna hit all the frame supports and then when we go to weld it in, I'll pull all my screws out and I'll plug weld all those spots or spot weld, whatever you want to call it. But it may seem kind of hillbilly or redneck. Well, I guarantee you it is, but I also guarantee you this will last like 30 years. How many junkyards have you went to and you're like, wow, this car's a rust bucket and you pull the carpet back and somebody already patched the floor 35 years ago and now it's sitting out in the yard and that patch panel is the only thing left. Usually it's a piece of galvanized uh, corn crib around here, but so I got the old floor pan back out of there and I got this body mount bolt that you can see I smacked it with the uh, the old air hammer a little bit knocked the crust off of it It actually still has the head of the bolt on there now. I can get it to move Like that I'm gonna take that as a good sign. I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna cut all this off of here with my cutoff wheels and uh, angle grinders and uh, try not to tear up this bottom sleeve here, the spacer, and just cut the head off this bolt. Then I'm thinking maybe I can get my air hammer and a drift pin on top and drive that down through the bottom because the nuts on the bottom and then I can just stack a couple of washers on top of this to space it up to the bottom of the new floor pan. I can drill a hole in it, and then when I go in town and get this piece of sheet metal for here that I'm gonna make my patch out of, I can grab a couple of hardened bolts from Royal King and a free bag of popcorn and uh, come back and slap that all together. Now, that is my plan, and we all know that that's not how it's gonna work, but you heard it here first, and then you're gonna get to watch the 
crying and complaining later when this comes off and I create a much bigger problem for myself. Well, that was a lot more successful than I had uh, thought it would be. It took a little bit of grinding, but it was so crusty and rusty, I didn't really know exactly what I was dealing with. I had a pretty good idea that it was just the head of a bolt, and uh, it was. It was the head of a bolt and a washer. Once I got the washer cut off of there, I got a little more space, and then uh, I just took my time, ground the head off of that. Don't want to do more destruction than uh, intended. And then, um, yeah, I didn't even put any lube on it. It just fell right out of there. Now, I'm going to try and get this rubber bushing off of here. And then um, we'll measure this bolt. And then I'll put that on my list to, to grab stuff. Um, yeah, for the trip to the store. Which is going to happen a lot faster than I think. I may be uh, headed to the store here in just a few minutes. It's Saturday morning. I... Just got out here a few minutes ago. It's about, I don't know, 8.15, 8.30, something like that. And, uh, yeah, make big progress. We're going to get her done this weekend, I promise you. We'll have front floors this weekend. Hopefully, if things go good enough, I can get that door over there fixed. So, you know, the side door doesn't try and rip the side of the van off. But front floors, main priority. This is what I concocted, guys. Check this out. I got my bushing separated there and it had a, uh, like a metal sleeve inside it. So I had, oh, here's another one. I had a piece of two inch pipe or space or whatever you want to call it, bushing thing, I don't know. And it fit perfectly, but it was too long. So I measured it, cut it down. So I got two of these. I got these cool bolts here. Now this bolt's, I don't know, it's for decking or something. I don't know. It shouldn't rust, uh, at least not in the time I care whether it does or not. And uh, it's the perfect length. And if I don't use it now, I'm probably never going to use it. So I'm putting her to use. I found these big old washers here. And my plan is I've got that metal bushing inside my body mount. It's going to go on from the bottom. And then I've got a bolt with a little washer. I drilled out the hole spot in the other in the other floor pan. It's over there in the van. And then I've got this big giant washer that is the correct diameter for that. And then I'm going to put a thicker washer on top of that with a lock washer and a nut. And boom, brand new body mount, except the bushings are still old. But I don't care. The bolt will actually do something. It'll go down through the pan. And this is what it's going to look like from the top side. Um, that'll get tightened down. The only thing I don't like is that there'll be a bump right there underneath your foot. That's the only downside to that. But anyway, being too picky, as of right now, I have a path forward. That's cool. Now I just need to measure and try and figure out what I'm going to do right here. Now, I do have a piece of sheet metal. Let me go grab it. Here's a piece of sheet metal that I had laying around, and it is actually the perfect size to do this patch. The problem I have with it is it's 22 gauge, and it's just super thin. I, it's just too thin for what I'm trying to do. I could go 20 gauge, 19 gauge is kind of what I really want, but um, I could even go thicker than that because this whole patch is going to be flat except for just a little bit right there and it doesn't quite reach over that hole right there but that's fine there's plenty of extra material back here i'm going to cut it off way up in here somewhere so i can use that to fix that i need two pieces one for each side and whatever's left over we'll use on something else but yeah it's just it's just a little too thin for it's thinner than the patch panels that's for sure and i don't really think they make this patch panel and my seats are sitting on it. I don't want this thing rattling going down the road or anything. So I'm going to run in town and see if I can't find a bolt with a smaller head. If not, we'll live with those. And um, a couple pieces of sheet metal that's just a little bit stiffer than this. And then later on today, we can tackle that side over there. Let me give you guys a quick peek at that. She's crusty, guys. She's crusty. You know all this back here, you know a lot of that. 
you know, for the camping trip, I'm just going to hide that under a rubber mat, I think. <laughs> It'll be fine. But I do need to address this big hole here. It hasn't broken free or anything, but it is obviously a structural issue. Um, heaven forbid we get hit in the passenger side or something. I, I just want a little more rigidity in there um, just to feel a little safer. And then obviously this back here, this is what holds this whole door and basically this whole side of the van together and it's gone. Once we get this seat bolted back in, A, we'll be able to start driving the van, but B, I'll be able to get to this back here. And I don't think this is going to be as hard to patch as it looks. It looks really, really bad because it is pretty bad. But um, in order to stiffen this all up, really, I just need um, to make a couple patches to go down around there and a patch to go on this inside and this fender on the inner fender there. Not a big deal. All that stuff will be hidden underneath carpet eventually anyway. So really, it can be some pretty thick stuff out of the scrap pile. And yeah, these floors will be done today. The only other real big holes in the floors in this van, there's a little bit of crust right here in this corner here. <laughs> you can tell I'm from Northern Indiana. I'm like a little bit of crust and it's just a giant rowel. <laughs> and then over here in this corner, it's pretty rusty. Um, I got a spot right here that's pretty bad. But again, I got that other van that I think's in a lot better shape because it didn't have press board laying on top of it. Oh, there's another little spot right over there. So eventually, I think I'll just psh, psh, cut me a big old patch right out of that white van and just psh, set it right in there. But um, look at me worrying about stuff that don't matter right now. Go to town, get popcorn, coffee, sheet metal, two bolts. Meet you guys back here in, I don't know, 20 minutes. <laughs> and we're back. Check it out. Now, I couldn't find any 20 gauge steel. They had 22, and then the next thing, I actually went to Menards because they were the cheapest, and I got 11% off. Everything in the store, you know, the same deal everybody else gets. But, um, yeah, this is actually 16 gauge, which is a lot stiffer. It's pretty expensive. It's like $65 but um, per piece, but it's exactly the size that we need. It's actually a little bigger. Like I said before, we can cut that off. There's that thin piece that I had before. That stuff probably would work, but I really just, I want to use this stiffer stuff since it holds my seat in. And I got a piece of this thin angle iron. I probably could have dug something out of my scrap pile, but I was standing there looking at it and I thought that stuff will work pretty good. Here's my plan for this. We've got this track here. where the hood, the engine hood, um, secures over. And of course, this whole section here is missing. This, <laughs> believe it or not, looks pretty sketchy, but it's really, really rigid still. There is this big cross member piece underneath here that runs right across here, right underneath this. So I'm gonna cut this off right along here so it's nice and clean. And this all looks pretty sketchy here, but it's actually really stiff. There's a lot of support kind of going on here. They've got this big channel across here and this big channel across here. So all I'm really trying to fill in is cover this stuff up here. I've got my bolt holes. And then this is supposed to be a piece of angle iron across here with the bolt holes for the other side of the seat. This one's pretty sketchy, but all it's really doing is holding that welded nut so that I can fasten it down to our new floor that we're going to put in here. I haven't fully decided whether I'm going to cut this out and put in a new piece of angle iron real quick with just some holes and just put nuts on the bottom side, or if I'm going to live with that for now, um, I could just, I'm probably just going to tap those out and live with it for now. Um, because how many times am I going to pull this seat in and out, to be honest? And if I tap those real quick and then I put a little anti-seize on them, they should be good if I ever need to take them out again. But I'll clean up some of this rusty stuff. This is all real stiff here, too, because, again, it's got that big body channel going through there. So I think we'll be fine with all that. I'm just going to wire wheel all this and paint it all with some uh, rusty... I got some uh, Satan Black 
and uh, yeah, spray it on there. It's not Rust Oleum brand. It's whatever that Krylon, whatever says anti rust, super whatever, whatever. We'll believe it, whether it's lying to us or not. But we're gonna take this piece of angle iron here, and I'm gonna bend it, finesse it, and essentially turn it into a lip around there. A lip around there to continue that around and then all I've got to do is cut my piece of sheet metal to go around that and it can sit right down on that and I can just weld it and it'll have a nice little lip around there I know this lip goes up and then radius is back I don't really think that is that detrimental to you know the rigidity of the system here and where we're going we'll cut some relief cuts in there do the old bad Chad trick cut some relief cuts in that so we can Kind of get this radius to continue around and profile that the way we want it to then we will uh yeah make a template out of cardboard probably so we can figure out where all our holes are lay it right on top of our new piece of sheet metal out there in the driveway cut her out yep time to quit talking action speaks louder than words i don't know where i heard that from but i think it was a famous person i don't know anyway here we go. So I started marking out my template, guys. Here's what I come up with. I came up with the dimensions of the piece of sheet metal I need with that big old beer box. Then I set one across here. I used the other box and I marked the front line of where my sheet metal is going to go. It's going to line up right there. And then I marked this edge of this radius. And then I pushed my box down and I marked that edge of my radius, right? Well, now I need to know this shape here. Whoop, what's that supposed to look like? Ah. Uh, you gonna make it up as you go, Dustin? Yeah, I could probably do that, screw up three times. But what I came up with is I came over here. I've got my hood right here, and I know I'm trying to make this radius right here. Now I know this rubber trim is the right shape, so I lifted this up. I set this under here like this. Oh, it's hard to do it. Hold the camera at the same time. Woo! Look at that using my feet i slid this right up and i lined up this mark with this mark and lined it up with my radius the best i could and i traced that out right like so with the old permanent marker now i'm going to trim that out and we'll see how well it fits friends it's pretty dang gone close fits perfectly so now what I need to do is I'll take this over and we'll lay it on our piece of sheet metal we will mark this out and cut that to fit I'll slide my panel in and I'll slide it up until it lines up exactly where I want it and then I can come back here and mark it back here but I already know I probably want it like 34 inches long I'm gonna come right up to this seam here so that it kind of I don't know, has a little bit of a gap and I can, I don't know, put some seam sealer in there. Who knows what? I can reach up through the bottom of the van and I can mark all these holes in my sheet metal so I know where to drill those holes out to bolt our seat down. Check out what we got. So I cut that radius out of there. I lined it up exactly where I want it. And instead of overlapping it over here, I slid it over and it goes right down that seam. Yeah, this stuff's all crusty, but it's all super strong because it's double thickness. Yeah, it's rusty, but we can solve that at a later date. That fills that whole hole in there. So all I gotta do is make me a little piece of angle iron for there. Now I've marked this with a permanent marker and I'm gonna take this angle iron. We're gonna fabricate this angle iron. 
to go right around this edge and I'm gonna go all the way up to the end of my panel and then where it overlaps this new sheet metal floor pan I will figure out what to do when I get there but essentially it will be a piece of, it'll be a part of this that'll get welded the angle iron will get welded onto it it'll come down here and I'll just kind of figure out how to cut that and make it kind of blend into this enough that that hood fits on there and then nobody will ever be the wiser so what I've done is I've done a series of cuts in this and then I put it in a vise and just bend it a little bit and I'm just holding it down underneath here and I'm trying to shadow that radius that I'm trying to get and that looks really good there now I need to start going the other direction here which means probably right in here-ish so I'll mark it down here and then yeah I'll keep doing the same thing I'll just start pie cutting across here to about well if I hold that on there I can just rotate that around almost about right there that's a long way but I can make a lot of cuts across there and just kind of go gradually we are real freaking close guys they are real freaking close I actually don't even need that I can just cut that off right there and that is actually been a little too much right in there let me go cut this off so I've just been kind of using my little baby anvil and finessing this radius in. It's working real good. This is where we're at so far. I got her trimmed off right where I said. Got everything kind of lined up where it's going to go. Got our piece of angle iron in there where it's going to go. I really like the way this kind of fits in here. Now this piece of sheet metal is actually thicker than our front piece. So I think I might put this piece underneath and lay this piece on top and that may make this a little more rigid but I haven't fully committed to that yet that would also put this top edge here would be sitting up on top of this and I could just trim this down and around and that'll give it a lot more support underneath <clears throat> and it wouldn't be three layers of metal thick here um, for that hood to kind of hide it would just be this piece going down to this piece so I think I kind of like that idea the best I am going to reposition my panels and see how that works essentially that's where the way it would be I kind of like the way this kind of uh, comes together a little bit better it's a little smoother flatter this tucks down in here better it just overall in general seems to fit a little bit better like that and then all I've got to do is figure out this piece which I've already got my radius is good so I just need to figure out if I'm going to yeah, I think I just figured it out I think what I'm gonna do is put this down under here and I'll trim this top lip off of this and off of this so that this sits right up in there like that because this piece is obviously a hell of a lot stronger and this rusty piece and this piece of stamped steel so that is the path forward all right guys so that piece was pretty rotted out i got me a piece of angle iron i chopped it out remember it looked kind of like that so um i marked my holes drilled my holes and then i cut it all out and then i put me that piece of angle iron on there and i welded her in there um i know you can't really see my welds because they look like the rest of the rust in here and uh, you know, I sprayed a little black paint on there and let that all dry real good. Now I gotta paint this, and you know, it's underneath the floor, so we want to put her on nice and thick, like your ex-girlfriend's makeup. And then we'll let that dry while I finish working on the floors. See if I can get her from the bottom side. Without getting it in my mouth. 
Look at that. Of course, I'll put her up in the air. Hit her a little better later, but as far as right now, this is gonna work just nice. So I'll just get a second coat of this on here. Woohoo! May not be fixing nothing, but it sure is hiding it good. Then we'll hide the rest of it underneath the floor. Look at that. It's all professional. Now, I'll show you guys my... Hey, Matt, what are you doing? I heard that you're painting like me. I was. It looks like it. Yep. Anyway, here's our floor pan, guys. I welded her across there. Remember, I never claimed to be good at welding. Just good enough. And, uh, yeah. So... Let that cool off just a little bit. We can go slap that in place once that paint dries off a little bit. We can start running sheet metal screws in this. This side's essentially done other than just screwing this in and welding it in. Um, and putting the bolts in. Oh, I do need to drill those two holes, but see, I've got them in this floor pan here. So when we set them in there, we'll know exactly where to drill the holes in that piece of angle iron. So I'm gonna move over and start working on the passenger side. This is the passenger side. As you can see, we got a hole up in here. I got this kick panel out. It's pretty crusty down in here. I'm gonna have to clean this all up, sweep everything all out and see kind of what we end up with. I'm not a Ford guy, so I did not know this. Check this out. There's like a little trap door into the heater system. And look, somebody's living in there, or at least they were. I'll sweep that all out and get that all cleaned up. Yeah, not bad. I work second shift, so um, if I drive this to work, I'll be driving at night, um, coming home, so it's nice kind of having defrost. I don't really need a heater necessarily, but I do need defrost, and that guy's going to need evicted. But yeah, I'll get this all swept up and uh, get our, uh, our floor pan for this side over here, and we'll kind of, um, you know eye up the situation here and then we'll uh, start hacking do a little bit of uh surgery so like the other side it looks like it actually fits pretty good now i am going to run into the same issue here the heater the bottom of the heater box down here the bottom of the heater box runs right across and it's going to run into this lip and i'm not pulling that heater box or any of that crap we're gonna trim this down and make it fit right up inside that hole there because there's a big old hole we gotta get filled. We got some seam sealer here that's kind of hindering us on this side. We'll get that carved out of there. And then we'll kind of see where this thing wants to lay down in here. Kind of like the other side, I'll just come along here with the sawzall and I'll cut across here and then I'll cut right across this edge right up into here and then I'll probably turn and go up into here or something because it's going to break into that hole anyway but that gives us some good meat here to kind of have it rest on and we can sheet metal screw it right to this firewall as long as there's nothing on the back side always check the back side before you just go run sheet metal screws in I've heard plenty of horror stories of guys running sheet metal screws right end up all kinds of important electronics and uh yeah cause you a lot of grief, a lot of gremlins, a lot of headaches, and possibly a lot of money. So anyway, we'll do that, chop all this out. This is all rusty and crusty. We'll get down, I'll do kind of the same thing. I'll go around this edge here, and we'll kind of see what we got left. This body rail looks like it's in a lot worse shape on this side, but till we get this hacked out of here, we don't really know what we got, so.
All right, guys, so I got this trimmed in just like I did on the other side. Got a couple screws in it. I got this panel cut. I even marked and drilled my holes here. Um, this side's actually in better shape, so I'm gonna use the threaded nuts that are down there. Um, I did drill my holes offset just a little bit, so I'm gonna have to open them up, but it doesn't matter. Got a huge base plate for my seats. I drilled out here so I can get to these body bolts back here if I ever need to. Obviously that hole's probably not quite big enough, but that's a future somebody else problem. I need to drill the hole over there for that side. That side's ready to all weld in, all the paint's good and all that fun stuff. So I need to make my piece of angled trim, little angle iron to go around there. That's what I'm working on now, um, or getting ready to work on now. Yeah, it's coming along pretty good. Um, Hopefully I can get a little bit more done and we can start welding that floor in and maybe bolt that seat in today. It's a stretch, but it could happen. We'll see. What do you think, Jason? Go for ice cream later. <laughs> That'd be nice. All right, guys, so got this all cleaned up, wire wheeled, and it's pretty much ready for paint. And then I can weld the other side while this paint dries and then I'll weld this side in. But here's what I ran into. Down inside this body channel, it's pretty crusty. And we've got a body mount underneath it. So I've come to the conclusion that to fix this correctly, a guy is not gonna cut this all out and replace it with good metal or weld anything onto it. What I'm gonna do is use this poor 15 putty. It's like JB Weld, but next level. I've used it a bunch of times, it cures underwater and this stuff is is great so i'm gonna cut this you mix it um two parts you know 50 50. um you knead it together it gets kind of stiff you can use a little water to smooth it out and i'm gonna spread it all out inside that frame channel and then we're gonna paint it and we're gonna put everything all back together and then later on when i put the van up in the air um, i can either put something on the bottom side to fill those holes in or i could weld a couple pieces of angle iron on from the bottom just to help support that but this will fill all those holes and hopefully um, stop the rust, slow it down, something. But uh, even if it continues to rust, at least this stuff's in there and this stuff is just as strong as steel. So um, essentially it can continue to rust and I can do nothing, right? Uh, sounds like a plan. Okay, that's what we're doing. It's a Ford anyway. Yeah. I mean, it, comes, it probably won't even start. It, I mean, comes, it comes with rust. Yeah, it, it is what it is. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do guys. So. So I'm just gonna line it up like that. This is where dust and bleeds. Is this how much I need? Yep. Yeah. I've already got the sweat and the tears. Now all I need is the blood. Yeah, that's where we're going. I wonder if that nougaty colored stuff tastes like nougat. I don't know. This looks like poop. Looks like nougat. Probably tastes like poop. Looks like the stuff in the middle of a Snickers bar. This looks like vanilla. I could use a coffee. <laughs> so, all you gotta do, if you've never used this stuff before, equal parts. Mix it together. It doesn't mix real easy because it's like a stiff putty, essentially. I would fold it. And start folding it. Hold the plate out, kids. I learned the basics of this when I was in the Marines doing C4 for demolition construction. Yeah. Uh, I actually did the body mounts on the back of a Buick one time, both rear body mounts, and then drove it. I mean, it held the whole back of the car up. Action! All right, guys, so all I've done is kind of smooth my putty out here now that I got her all mixed up. Oh, I can't see down in there. And then, oh, let me show you here. I'm just taking my hands and I'm just smashing it, smashing it down in there and around this. We're gonna say a prayer and hope for the best. Yep. 
get it right down in these corners get it all mushed in there good and this is gonna get hard as steel so again worst case scenario is it's a piece of flat hard shit in there and later on if I put this up in the air I can put a piece of angle iron on both sides or whatever put a hole through it run a screw in it because you can drill this stuff tap it and essentially I'm making a something that I can actually fasten to on the inside of here I think it'll work good it's better than it was and uh, yeah complain in the comments and tell me how hillbilly this is and how I'm probably gonna destroy this but you know I think you just ruined I just think you ruined like five dollars worth of putty is all you really did this stuff's not five dollars <laughs> but it's better than JB Weld I've used JB Weld before and it, it's good for its intended purpose but a lot of people put a little more faith in the old JB Weld than they should and uh, this stuff works so that's what I'm going to continue to do. And then we can paint all this stuff. And while it dries, oh, chunk of rust. While it dries, we'll get the welding over there. Right, Jason? He can watch for fires. Yeah. Okay. Catch you guys in a minute. Yeah. driver's side in and welded now remember these welds ain't great and it don't matter we're just trying to go to town and this will do it I do have this little hole here along this edge here remember um, we discussed how crusty that kind of was I think I have a solution for that I think I'm gonna go up underneath after I'm done and put a piece of angle iron right across there to cover them holes up and give this a little more rigidity there not that it really needs it. I mean, it's it's steady, stable, not squishy, not a hole, except that hole and that hole. But you could stand there and not fall through bigger hole. So that's a win. Got that brace all welded in there. This thing is solid. We're good to go. I'm gonna toss that side in and get it welded in. Whew, man. And here we are, guys. It's the end of Sunday. I'm done for the day. I need a cheeseburger. But, passenger side, all welded in. All I'm gonna do is flap disc down my welds a little bit, just knock the tops off of them. And then we're going to spray bomb all this black. And then, yeah, then I can start working on putting the seats back in. I had a chance to make a quick little patch right here. I know I kind of overkilled on the welding, but don't really want my seat belt to, uh, you know, not stay attached in an emergency if you know what i mean and uh, i kind of welded that patch right to the seat belt so that means this is going to quit working almost immediately tomorrow i'm going to assess this it's uh pretty bad it's pretty bad it looks real bad when you do this So we need to address that. That's all the body stuff that has to be done before I can drive this thing to the Michigan Racing Camp in the back of it. It is the next day and here we go. Time to tackle this corner here. I got Matt to help me because I'm going to need a little bit of help today. Because as you can see this is all rotted out. The whole side of the van moves and uh, I know it doesn't look very bad just surface rust. Um, but it's actually a lot worse guys than what it looks like up here. The side panel has pulled completely loose From here, so that's what I'm gonna have Matt help me with first is we're gonna push that in and Then I'm gonna put a couple sheet metal screws in here self tappers into this track to kind of hold it in place and then I'm gonna re-weld that and then pull the screws out and plug weld it and then that should pull this back 
up here where it's supposed to be and then we can make a patch to fix all this we're gonna have to cut some of this out because a lot of this isn't even doing anything anymore and uh yeah we'll probably build a new piece of angle iron and some stuff we'll make this happen but first we got to cut all this old out of here and we got to get this into position where it's actually supposed to be right now it just rests on the inside of that door which is not good so um yeah little tutorial on the CAD system now if you've never done this before it's pretty simple and pretty easy and it makes making sheet metal panels so simple compared to uh, what you think how hard it should be um, oh look somebody dropped my scissors and bent the end of it that sucks anyway life goes on so all I've got to do is cut my piece of cardboard in as big a pieces as I want and then I use a little blue painter's tape to tape it into place now I've even got this going all the way back in there, and as you can tell, it's not big enough, but that's fine, that doesn't matter, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make me another piece that is big enough to go down in there, and then I'll tape it all together, and I'll determine whether I can make all this out of one piece of sheet metal, because I can just trace my template, or if I need to make like two or three patches, you know, one on top of another. Back in here, it looks like it's probably gonna be two patches, so this one will go across and go up, this is the outside of the um, van, so I really can't weld to that without burning a hole in the paint on the other side. Um, I may have to. I may have to put a couple tacks on there just to hold that. And then we'll put another piece that goes down in here on top. It comes out and fills all that. But essentially, this is all you've got to do. And once you get it all done, covered up just the way you want it covered up, you just slowly peel all your tape off of there. And then, boom, you have a perfect template you can lay right down onto your sheet metal trace it out cut it out and then you've got your cardboard that you can lay on there and mark where all your bends need to be you can bend everything and you can get it about 80 percent where you need it to be bring it back and then finesse her with the old uh you know professional tools put her right where you want her weld her in i like to use uh sheet metal screws as you guys know um self tappers to kind of hold things in place finesse it around and then once you get it all done you just pull your screws out and plug weld all the whole shit Pretty simple, easy process. guys so I got all my patches made probably gonna have to make another one for the outside of the van but I can't really um, make that out of cardboard at the moment because the doors kind of in my way kind of trying to open and close it and get everything lined up but here's what we've got got this all covered up just like we want it right so now I just untape my patches that's gonna be one piece one patch
I've got a patch right down in here. That's my second patch. And then I have my third patch. Which I will install first. There it is. So we can go trace these all onto a piece of sheet metal. Start making our patches. We'll make this one first. We'll make this one second. And then we'll make this one third. And we'll start fitting everything together. And then um, I only cut one patch at a time. We'll install that patch. And then we'll make sure the next patch actually fits the way we want it to and make any adjustments if need be. All right guys, so I've got my patch traced out, my first patch here. It looks pretty complicated, but really we're just gonna cut around this outside edge and give ourselves a little bit of space. And then I put dotted lines everywhere where I wanna fold it. So I'm gonna fold it there, fold it there, and we're gonna fold it there. All right guys, so we got our patch cut out. Woohoo! Looks just like this piece of cardboard. You have it upside down. Except, I have it upside down, and it's not actually cardboard. So, we've got everything marked. We need to fold it here, we need to fold it here, and we need to fold it here. Luckily, all my folds are 90 degree angles. So, we're going to take it over to my Bendomatic 9000, and uh, we'll get the bendy bending. All right, guys, so, we're over here at my magical bender here. And uh, the cool thing about this is you can remove some of the fangs that uh, make it bend. So I've removed this big one here for the time being so we can make our small bends there and there. And uh, just got my cardboard here so I make sure we do this right. So the first thing we're gonna do is bend this one up this way so it gets out of the way for our tiny bend. I'm not gonna go all the way because we can uh, Kind of look at it and double check it, make sure it's doing kind of what we want it to do. Looks like it is. Needs a little bit of loving. Mick loving. Almost there. There we go. That's not a full 90, but it's pretty close because we kind of munched it up a little bit. But what the hammer's for. So we've got our angle bent. We've got a pretty good crease there. And I don't think I can bend it any further on this, but I can take it over to our vise and the anvil, and we can continue that around to get it right where we need it to be. Essentially, we need to close that in. So let's go over there and do that. But man, that got us real close to where we need to go. Pretty quick, pretty easy. All right, guys, so if you don't have an anvil, I highly recommend you get you an anvil. I actually got two. Big and little. Super handy, because you can carry this places. But, um, yeah, got her bent into place, just kind of positioned her places and tweaked her little things between the vise and the anvils. Um, that looks pretty close to uh, what it's supposed to. Put our patch on here, our little CAD design. It's pretty close. So let's go see if it fits in the van. Then we can start working on patch number two, which I think is the little easier one. I hope. <laughs> Can't cross your fingers. That is real close. Where's it hitting? Oh, that back corner. It's hitting in the back corner. That radius is a little too far forward back in there, but we can pull this over. That sucks that in. Probably could have carried that over a little further into that zone but no big deal we can live with it the way it is for the minute so what i'm running into here 
is this needs to be back this way just a little bit further. So what I'm gonna do, since there's no metal down there, so I'm just gonna bend this back just a little bit to give me that little bit of space. And once we get everything else positioned, I'll tap that out and tack it. There we go. Now it goes right in there where I want it. This needs to get tweaked up that way a little bit. And we had this edge is gonna bend down around there, but we've gotta get this all screwed in where we need it. And then we'll tap that edge down and around. So, time for some sheet metal screws. So we got this patch in guys, as you can see, looks pretty good. I'll be able to weld that seam shut right there. And then our other patch, remember it's gonna cover all this stuff up in here. So I just kinda got this all screwed into place for the minute. And down in here looks pretty good. And when I go to weld this, I'll just push that out. Push that out right like that. And then I'll just weld that right to that outside piece there. And we'll be good to go. Now I do have another patch that's gonna go right down in here and it's gonna fill this hole here. Woo -hoo -hoo. Go in this direction. So we're gonna go make that patch real quick. And we're also gonna cut this other patch here because that one in there is gonna be pretty simple. They don't, um, I guess, uh, affect each other, so. So here's where I'm at, guys. It's time to start sticking stuff to stuff a little more permanently. I've got this panel so that it's about ready to get kind of finessed in and then I can trim and whatever I need to whoop um, right here kind of on the fly. Now, I did remove this door ever so slightly. I didn't remove it all the way, although I'm sure there is a way to do it, but this van's so crusty. If I start taking out this crap to get this door off, for sure I'm gonna break something and that's a side quest I don't think I need to uh, complete today. Um, I did take the three bolts out of the bottom of that and that allowed that to wiggle enough that I could pop it off the bottom of there and then you just move your door to the right spot in this track here and the pop pops right out. I got it precariously balanced on that milk crate and uh, yeah that's for sure gonna fall and break and a bunch of other problems are gonna arise from that but until then I'm gonna continue on with this. I got a little tripod set up so you guys can watch but Basically, I'm going to pull this patch off and then I'm going to start tacking this back patch in. other guys tell you if you got to grind your weld you ain't a welder because i'm telling you what guys no crap in your wheaties every chance they get them guys grind it to fit too they're just lying to you now this don't look too shabby for what it was on a scale of one to ten it's way mo gooder and uh, yeah, we're ready to put our patch on here. I just ground them welds down, got our screws out of there so that we can finesse the next panel into place. I even got up inside here and got some welds in there to tack some of that together back in there. It's kind of hard to see. I don't know if I can get it on the camera for you guys. You can see I got that patch welded in there. That's all closed up pretty good. There's a bunch of junk down in there. I'll clean all that out later. guys so here's the plan I got the door shut and you can see we got a rubber seal here and there's our patch that I've got trimmed down to fit and 
I am going to take the door back off and I'm going to take this piece of angle iron here, same stuff we've been using, and it's going to get put right on there like that. I'm going to cut it, bend it. I'm probably going to cut it and bend it across there just to give it a little more rigidity. And this up in here, I'll cut this off so it's nice and square. And hopefully I can attach this right up in there. I might pull that sheet metal screw out and use it to attach it. I don't know. We'll figure that out when we uh, get there, you know, kind of making her happen on the fly. This is what we ended up with, the first stage in our van restoration. It took all weekend and a couple of days during the week, but I managed to get floors in this thing. All they need is a little bit of rust preventative paint, which I will do off camera because I'm not going to bore you guys with a paintbrush and a can of paint. I mean, that's boring, right? I'm bored just thinking about it. <laughs> now. The big thing, remember this side of the van? You couldn't even put your hand here. The whole side would cave in. Now look at it. It looks nice. As long as you don't open the door, it looks perfect. It's like nobody even knows that it was all broke. But, like butter. It's basically brand new. And we had that big gaping hole. We've got it all cleaned up, patched in there. And again, like I've told you guys before, you practice, you practice, you practice on some rusty... Uh, you know junk piece of crap and then uh every time you do something you get a little better at it now this thing ain't going to Meekum or uh, barrett jackson or anything but if it was we'd just hide that underneath carpet i mean we're not going to barrett jackson or uh or Meekum or anything so we're just gonna hide that underneath carpet so we can go camping because that's what we want to do and it's the right thing to do I know I spent quite a bit of time on that and you know, I could have spent another five, six hours on that, but it's plenty good enough. I'm gonna put it underneath some paint and she'll be good to go and check out the outside of this. Right down here, I fixed that quarter panel just like I promised and our little piece of angle iron we put in there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it pushes right up against the rubber seal on the door, just like was from the factory. So look at that. It's like nobody even knows that we did all that body work. That's so rewarding when you spend like eight hours on something and you can't even tell. Now in here, I do have a big rust hole in the other fender over there. I'm not going to bore you guys with that. It's right above the gas tank, so I'm probably going to blow up doing it. But I'm going to make a little patch, toss that in there. And then, yeah, it, I'm ready for the next video on the old van. I can't wait to go cruising in this thing. So that's what we're doing next. I'm going to work on the lights. I'm going to get this thing fired up. It hasn't been driven, driven since 2003. And I'm going to take it to O'Reilly's and buy parts for it and maybe end up stranded on the side of the road but at least you guys will be there with me and i should probably get roadside assistance because it's a ford and i'm the one fixing it it's all good i can't wait i hope you guys are stoked too give me some sweet ideas for the inside of the van is there anything i should do like led lights or power strips or anything cool because this is going to be our camper van right um yeah, there's all kinds of ideas all over Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, you know, you name it. You just open up the old phone there and just start typing in van and you'll be like, holy crap, these vans are so cool. Way cooler than my crusty old van, but I can go look at the cool vans in my crusty old van if I can get it running. So 
Look at all the other videos around my melon here. That's other crap that we do around the shop and I know you're gonna enjoy it. So make sure you go check it out. And yeah, until next time, keep on wrenching. Peace.